good, Daddy. You done real good. That's the way I like it. Not even a drop of blood on the shirt. Just as easy as shooting that steer. Daddy, can I have a shirt? No, the women get the shirt. Can I have his pants? Brother Coppa gets the pants. What about the iron? The shooting iron is mine. Daddy, I'll at least get the boots. More his size for Cousin Cleek. You can have his saddle. I ain't never rode a horse with no saddle on it. Besides, copper shunt get pants. This feller ain't even need. Cost two cents for you to pull that trigger. Break that rifle button, you spend the next six months whittling another one. Well, how am I supposed to finish him off? You don't. Well, he must have more than 500 cows listed here. Woo Man, with that number of cows, it might just be worth more alive than dead. You know how we was gonna head up north, find us some gold? And pick it up and sell it for a lot of money? We just might have found it here. Where? Here. More sewer to that concoction, cousin. Where'd you get him? That poor fella. Well, he fell amongst thieves, and we happened along the trail just in time to save him. I heard some shooting. Oh, well, brother Copper here was quick enough of mine to get a shot off at him, and uh, <laughs> they sure sent them robbers off to making footprints. Footprints? Didn't them robbers have no horses? Yeah. No. Ali Kay, you go look after that poor fella. Black spots in his eyes ain't too big. Ain't too little, neither. Lost some hide alongside his head, but ain't in it in much. He ain't sneezing, that's a good sign. But if and he starts breathing bubbly, we're gonna lose him. Pinto, get me hot water, lots of it. Pinto, do like she says. We can't have this young fella dying off on us. Just like them rich folks to pull a trick like that on us. Oh, now, Brother Copper, rich folks ain't all bad. They're just all rich. An affliction which ain't attacked us recent. But there just might be a plague of it coming on. You take this rich man here for an instant. His family is going to be so happy to get him back, they just might offer us some nice reward for being good Samaritans. Like maybe some money. Now, listen to me, everybody. We're gonna be the nicest, gentlest, humblest folks they ever met in their born days. Cousin Cleek, you get that wheel back on the wagon. Ain't gonna take us very fur. It'll take us fur enough. Danny, how are we gonna find his house? We'll swat his horse on the rump and follow it. Hmm? Mr. Johnson wants to see you about something. He's out by the barn. Thank you. I can't find anything wrong with him. Neither could I. Yet I know one thing. This horse could never throw Mr. Heat. Maybe he's with Audra. No, ma'am. She rode to town for the mail, so I figured I'd... No, no. You stay off horses for another week like the doctor said. Saddle mine and... Happy day, good lady. How do you do? We'd appreciate some information if you'd feel so kindly. If I have it. 
Well, traveling down country, we run across some poor fellow, done fell in among thieves, and we just couldn't leave him there. Did you lose anybody? Where is he? He's in the wagon, man. Yeah, allow me to point the way. Heath! Then he is yours. He's my son. Would you help me get him inside, please? You know, Papa. How bad is it? The kind of ornery crease, ma'am. He must have surprised some rustlers butchering a cow, and they shot him. We just happened up and time to scare him away, oh. Poor fellow. Well, I appreciate your help, Mr. Cade is the name, ma'am. John Wesley Cade, but everybody calls me daddy. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Ain't there any other men about to help? We'd hate to mess up your carpets. Our men are out on Roundup. Oh, but they'll uh, they'll be back shortly. Now this here is Alley Cade. He's right fair with herbs and roots. Kept him alive so far. She'd be happy to help with the tendon. Thank you. Please be careful. Follow me. Do you hear the lady? Ain't no other men around. They'll be back shortly. How long is shortly? We'll use the back stairs. It's quicker. Be careful. Anything I can do, good lady? If I need any help, I'll call you. Thank you, ma'am. Man, oh man, hey. big house like this might even get a bigger reward than we first thought. You ought to see at least a thousand dollars. Little lady ought to be that grateful. Well, what if and she ain't? An interesting thing, though. Ain't no men around, except for a servant and a wrangler with only one good arm. Real interesting. If we can only find out when the other men are coming back. We need two days to get out of the area. I've never been in a house like this before. I bet she's just chock full of all kinds of Jim Dandies. That lady sure cuts a fine figure of a woman. Oh, quality. Mm. I've always had a hankering for quality. Just never had a chance to indulge it. Might get that chance. No. Quality ain't like some creek squaw you catch all alone out in the brush. You gotta handle it different. If you need me, ma'am, I'll be down at the corral. Thank you. Ma'am, how's that poor fellow? He'll be all right. I want to thank you again for your help. Well, just knowing we've been a help is thanks enough. Please accept this as a token of my appreciation. Huh? Oh, no, ma'am. We didn't do this for no reward. We just wanted to help that poor fellow. Thank you, ma'am. Well, I, um, I guess because of the delay, you, you'll be wanting to get back on the trail again. Well, actual, ma'am, this was supposed to be our day of rest. And our, our wagon has a wheel close to collapsing, so, uh... Well, uh... You may spend the night in the barn. You'll find a spare wagon wheel there. Help yourself. Good lady. You're a flat out saint. Eh. $100 in a wagon wheel. Shh. That's a sorry reward for saving her son's life. Ooh. Let's go look at our new home and get on that wagon wheel. Mother? 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 Yes, dear? Did you have the raw hairs on the back of the house? Yes, I know. Heath has been hurt. They brought him in. I told them they could spend the night in the barn. Heath hurt? What happened? Well, he has a scalp wound. They said he was shot by rustlers. I don't think he's in any immediate danger, but he's still unconscious. I want you to ride back to town and bring out Dr. Murrow. I'm on my way. There was no mail, but there's a telegram from the boys. From Mr. Nick? 
I hope it says he's coming back tonight. Heard brought good price. Men need rest. Jared wants us to spend the rest of the week in San Francisco. Home on the 17th. Heath can handle things. Love, Nick and Eugene. Jackson's got uh, 18 wall arms, and Saddles is on three of them. And there's 18 beds in the bunkhouse, and, and the blankets has gone off and all but one of them. And it all adds up to everybody being gone, except for the people in the house and the wrangler with a broke arm. If there's only some way of knowing when these are coming back. Well, the quality lady said they'd be back shortly. Looks like we're going to have to settle for a hundred dollars in the wagon wheel. We ain't ready to give up yet. Ah, so that's where that little yellow-haired gal kited off to. Get a doctor, I bet you. I best go up there and see how that poor fellow's coming along. Lupe. Lupe. Twist us a key? It's all right, it's all right. You just be quiet. A quest out cerca de me. Quero albasarte. Dame un besito. Oh, Mr. Heath, you better not do that. You, you just lay back down and rest now. sign of consciousness? None, and he doesn't have a fever. His breathing seems regular. Hi. Hello. Put that bandage on. I did. It's filthy. Well, it may look that way, but I boiled it before I put it on. Any sign of his coughing? No, no coughing or breathing bubbly. Good. There's no internal bleeding. Probably suffered a contusion as all, no skull fracture. What's this poultice? A uh, clover wart and mare's tail. I cleaned it up with soap and whiskey. Yeah. Well, you might have done worse. I know that. I'm a healer, too. Are you? Order some hot water, please. Has he shown any sign of coming around? Well, in a way. A little while ago, he was talking in Spanish. I don't know what he said. I don't think he knows neither. We'll just wash him up, take a better look. Can I help you? I'm just wondering how that poor fellow's doing. I'm sure he's doing fine, thank you. Best go up and see for myself. is serious, but not critical. Be strong, young man. Just see that he stays in bed. You know, Victoria, if they were Russians, they were pretty desperate and stupid. Please they get away with something like that in broad daylight. Well, now, how is that poor fella? Who's this? This is Mr... Cade's the name. But everybody calls me Daddy. It was us what saved him. Well, Victoria, I'm gonna have to go on down to Mrs. Henderson. 
They're begetting again. Real begetters. But I'll stop in on my way back uh, this evening about 6 o'clock. I'll have some dinner for you. Oh, no thanks. Well, if you excuse me, I'd like to talk to uh, Mrs. Barclay and Audra. Alone? Oh. Oh, sure. We'll wait outside the door. These people are raw hiders. Did it ever occur to you that they might have shot Heath themselves? I thought of that possibility. But it doesn't seem likely they'd shoot him and then bring him here. Well, maybe you're right. Oh, that girl seems like a good nurse. But uh, clean her up a little bit. Make her a little more sanitary. Well, I'll stop in on my way this evening. Well, never mind, Victoria. I know the way out. Thanks, Howard. I'll walk you down, Doc. You've been on the trail a long time. Perhaps you'd like to freshen up. Freshen up? Or take a bath? Oh, surely. And I have a dress that might be more uh, comfortable. Dress? Mm-hmm. You mean I could actually try it on? You may keep it if you like. Oh, I ain't never had a dress before. I, I guess I'd better go down to the creek and flake off a few inches of prairie dust. You won't have to go to the creek. The bathtub is right here in the house. I thank you, Doc. I said, thank you, Doc. Good day. took a real down earth bath before. Daddy did, that one time. He used to talk about it around the campfire. Your father must have led a, an interesting life. Well, Daddy ain't my father. My folks was killed by Indians when I was about four or five. These people just picked me up. Guess I couldn't find no place to leave me. I sure am tired of living like a rattlesnake. Run for shade when it's hot and Hit for sunshine when it's cold. I was gonna leave several times. But leave to where? I mean, what can I do? Daddy can do sums and read some, but he won't teach no one else how to. Daddy thinks I'm gonna marry Pinto. Well, the day before I do that, I'm gonna take me a horseshoe knife and... Daddy says he took his bath in a real gold bathtub. Bet it wasn't nice as this. Daddy lies a lot. Remember if I left Nick's telegram here on the table? Yes, ma'am. You left it right there on, t on the table. And I didn't take it. Oh, well, then I must have moved it someplace else without thinking. No, ma'am. They took it. They know the men are not getting back tonight, don't they?
was sent from San Francisco on the 10th. It was yesterday. There ain't gonna be no men around here for the rest of the week. Ooh, in that time, we can loot this place and get clean to Canada. Not so fast, my fine feathered jackass. I happen to know that the doctor is gonna be back here around 6 o'clock. He's probably gonna keep a close look in on that poor fellow for a while. Let's just kill him. You don't kill no doctor. People miss him too quick, and they keep asking after him. No, they'll be on our trail in a minute. That is right. No, we just got to wait until he spreads his visits out of mine. Now, we got to have at least two days for a getaway. They can track us over this soft ground, but we get up north in shale and limestone country, no wagon tracks. But, meanwhile, Ain't no reason why we shouldn't enjoy the quality of this here place. No, we just gotta move slow like. How did I get here? Somebody creased you with a bullet and we brung you in. When did all this happen? About five or six hours ago. Um, who's Loopy? You know her? Why'd you ask? Well, you was talking about her. What'd they say? What do you think you said? Well, there's a lot of things I hope I didn't say. Now, you're supposed to stay in bed. Well, I gotta finish telling those cows and... Allie Kay, why don't you go get some rest? I'll sit with him. He might need some tending. Well, I'll call if there's any need. Thank you. What set this off? It ain't fair, Daddy. It ain't fair. We all gotta be a mite patient. Before long, we'll all get new clothes, but we gotta go slow with quality. Now, you're supposed to be up there with that young fella. You come down here just to kick up a fuss? No, Daddy. I just came down to tell you I overheard Miss Barclay tell Silas to go get the eggs. Oh. No eggs? Well, there should be four or five dozen. Miss Barker, those hen nests are as naked as jaybirds. Well, they just didn't hatch and fly away. Good lady, we seen you were short-handed, so we collected the eggs for you. As long as you're so hospitable, the least we could do is a few chores. Thank you. I'd be happy to have the boys slot the hogs for you. If you provide the slots, we just don't have none left over. Mr. Johnson can take care of the hogs. Oh, fine, fine. Will you just let me know anything you want done around here because I'm a plum one-eyed jack? Silas, uh, put a dozen eggs in the kitchen and bring the rest back. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Lovely and generous. Hey. Ah, oh, that's a fine iron. Never seen the likes of that. Oh, I hate to mention it, ma'am, but uh, uh, your kind generosity caused me a mite of embarrassment. How? Oh, remember that dress you give to Allie Kay? Well, the other woman got plumb jealous. And I was just wondering if you, uh, if you had something else around here that was, uh, well, raggedy, but pretty. It might even things up a bit, you know. Oh, I'm sure I can find something. 
Lovely and generous. Hallelujah. seen Alec Case since we got here. Spends all her time up in the room with that feller. I know what's going on. Quality like him ain't like to take to Alec Case. Sure end up, she looks right fair. I bet that feller taint sick at all. Jess up there hanky panking my fiance. I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kill him now. After you do, you best reload and blow your brains out because if you don't, I will. I gotta think me up a plan. Ain't nobody gonna mess it up. Allie Kay ever tell you she was gonna marry you? No. You mean you got your eye on her? No, I'm too old to start educating a child. I need me a woman of quality, money. Hey, Daddy. Why? That doctor just rode back in. Not so. That means all the folks will be upstairs for a spell. It'll give you all a chance to see what you can find in the house. I'll warn you when your time is up. I thought that might rouse you. I suffered it. Oh, boy, how to get that thing away. I'm just doing what's good for you. Allie Kay, the doctor's here. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Well, there was a trip I could have done without. How do you feel? It was fine until I woke up. Hi, Doc. How are you? I'm good. You're looking better. Thanks, but my head feels like it's about to fall off. Did you notice any bleeding from his ears or nose? No. How about you? You remember anything that happened? Last thing I remember is eating breakfast. That's not unusual. Well, your heart checks out all right, but I'll tell you one thing, Heath. You're going to have a bad headache for several days. And there may be lapses of consciousness, so don't leave this bed. We'll see that he gets plenty of liquids. Oh, Victoria, when I was here last, did uh, I leave my watch? No, I didn't see it. Yes, I was sure I had it here, yeah, but when I got to the Hendersons, it was gone. Well, I'll be doggone. This must be your watch. Doc, I found a line on the ground outside. Probably fell out of your pocket whilst crawling into your rig, huh? Thanks. Always happy to oblige. Well, how are you, young fella? I'm the one found you and brung you in. Thank you. Well, no need for me to hang around. I'll be back at the end of the week. Uh, just change his bandages every day and let him have a lot of peace and quiet. I'll be glad to walk the doctor down for you, ma'am. That won't be necessary. Oh, no, no trouble at all. Well, Victoria, the worst part is over. So just see that he gets plenty of rest and quiet. All right, I'll see to it. And thank you very much, Howard, for coming out again. That's right, Doc. We flat out appreciate it. Like I said, plenty of rest and quiet. Good evening. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Daddy, call me Daddy like everybody else. If you'll excuse me, I have to get dinner. I can have Cousin Ruthina fix your fiddles for you. There's no reason for a quality woman to be bothering about cooking. It's stuff. no bother. I enjoy it. Well, you just might like what Cousin Ruthina can conjure up. If there is one thing I do not enjoy, it's having anybody in the kitchen while I'm preparing a meal. Oh. Well, good lady, I guess we done kind of took advantage of your hospitality. We were just so happy about that poor fellow up there getting better. We'll be leaving first thing in the morning, and if you ain't awake, thanks for everything. We 
Would you like something to eat? Maybe some water. Cartridge bearing rifle. Did you get them all? Well, all I seen. Uh, there's all hung in them cabinets in that room with the wood wall. Yeah. I didn't have time to check every nook and cranny. Hey, Daddy. Look what tall I found. Yeah. Quality, Daddy. Real quality. Well, I bet they got more. Oh, this here's enough for tonight. Beats that pot whiskey, don't it, Daddy? Mmm. Sure do, Pino boy. Mrs. Barkley must have left the Winchester here by mistake. Uh -huh. <gasps> One thing I can't stand is a nosy wrangler with a broke arm. Oh, it looks like we don't dilly daddy around no more. We're going to have to kill off all them folks tonight. Make that stuff or scoop it off an alkali pond. I guess you'd rather have tamales and chili. Well, you have to keep getting back to that. Well, you sure talk soft when you thought I was that loopy. You act a whole lot different, too. Well, I never told anyone I spent my life alone in a cave. Now, what are you driving at? You just won't understand, will you? I understand one thing. You saved my life out there. One well, nothing. Quite a bit to me. When I get the chance, I mean to find the proper way to thank you. I don't know why you're having us cover him up if we're leaving here tonight anyway. Well, I changed my mind. We're gonna take off first crack at dawn, unless something come along to change our plans. Uh, I always was born to live good. Jack my heels up on a fine cherry wood table, read part of a good book. And if I don't like it, I tear it up. Yeah. I ought to have me some fine, soft clothes. And if they don't fit me, I just tear them off. <laughs> Ain't never had a chance to do that before. Now, Doc won't be back for a couple of days. Men won't be back for a week. Oh, I'm going to set myself down on fine swans down, sofa cushions, drink good liquor, smoke me a big cigar, and when that pretty quality lady comes down, her eyes flashing, I'm gonna have a surprise for her. You gonna shoot her? No. I'm gonna pop her the question. Ooh, Daddy, she gonna spit right in your face. Then I'll shoot her. Let's go. <laughs> What's 
happening? What are they up to? You gonna tell me? It was Daddy and Pino and Copper that shot you. There wasn't no other bushwhackers. Do you realize what you're saying? I growed up with them, but, but I ain't like they are. You just gotta believe me. Then will you help me? Just tell me what to do. Find out what they're up to. some fancy hand irons to boot out there in that barn. And that's not all we're gonna took before this night's out. They're gonna catch you before you got a chance to breathe twice. Oh, buddy's gonna catch us. There won't be nobody left to put on a chase. First, I gotta have a talk with that quality lady. Well, I better be going. Going? That fellow upstairs, he finished his broth and he wanted me to get him some cold milk. Hey, oh! You ain't never brung me no cold meal. You keep that voice down. Let's get him. If he's up to taking food, he could be dangerous. No. He's still fuzzy. Are you sure? He ain't barely got enough strength to set up. Good. Well, I better hurry. Allie Kay. He's gonna get suspicious if I don't show back up. Spoony on that fella up there, have you? Of course not. Ours a cold milk. Oh, milk? Well, it was curdled. I best be getting back up there before he wonders what's keeping me. you repay my hospitality? Oh, I'm sorry about the mess, ma'am. Good lady, sit down. I've been wanting to talk to you. I'd be very interested in what you have to say. Ever since I seen you, you leapt on my eyes like a variable angel. Now, I ain't a bad figure of man. I've been a widower now on the three whole months. It's starting to crimp me. 
You're a widow. How's about you and me getting widowed? You, you could do a lot worse. I'd have to think that over. Would you excuse me, please? I'd like to speak to my daughter privately. Oh, of course, ma'am. I was afraid of this. One of them has on Johnson's shirt. We'll get Heath and get out of here. Were you serious when you asked me to marry you? Well, I sure was, ma'am. Well, then I'm going upstairs to change. After all, a lady can't accept a proposal dressed like this, can she? I think they killed Johnson. They plan to kill all of us. Now, we're silent. In his room, I'll get him. Get to the barn, and I'll cover you from the window and meet you later. All right. Cousin Pete, get that sofa up right there. Hey, Pino, Pino, pick up a chair. Hey, you put that sausage back where you find it. Now, go on. Go on, Rufina. Pick up them flowers. Now, we got to red up this room nice for the wedding. Miss Parker, I'm so glad to see you. You know what? Yes, yes, I know all about it. Hurry up. Danny, looks like your bride's eloping without you. Just seen her scoot out the kitchen door. Well, the underhanded. All right, Pinto, you can take that fella now. Copper, you get the servant man. Cousin Cleek, you come with me. Thank you. 
guess I ought to put this poor fellow out of his misery is permanent. People I'm going to nurse don't live far from here. Yeah, it's on the way to town. We should warn you. Why? Well, if you're going to come and see me, I'd like you to have to go out of your way. Well, I'll come to see you even if I don't have to go to town. happen. What do you mean, what else happened? Did you get the mud out of the sinkhole? Did you get the north section fenced? Hey, what about the dam on the Walnut Creek? I don't know why it is. We leave for a little while, you go off gallivant, and the whole place goes to pot. Well, I was flat on my back, didn't the groundbreaker fall? and dress like that. I was going to you, Miss Morgan. Nick asked us all to meet him at the station. What could be so important? And we're all going to be there. Now go up and change your clothes and poke your head in Jared's door. I have a feeling he went back to sleep. Good morning. It's supposed to be my vacation. Well, I'm sure meeting Nick isn't going to ruin it completely. Oh, good morning, Silas. Good morning, Miss Barker. Good morning, Silas. Have you seen Heath? Yes, ma'am. He had something to do down at the corral. He said he'd be right back. Thank you. Good morning, Silas. Good morning. Chief. Good morning, morning Mother. Good morning. How are you feeling? I'll tell you as soon as I'm awake. I just wish Brother Nick could pick a more convenient hour for his homecomings. I'm not quite up to whatever good news he's bringing us this time. Good news? Now, you know perfectly well he's never come back from one of these trips yet without bringing home some earth-shaking discovery. Gene, what was it last time? Uh, some kind of machine that's supposed to sew faster than by hand. Hmm. Hmm, that was it. Well, I'll tell you, when Nick gets here, if he has any more of those wild ideas, we'll just ship him right back to San Francisco. Hello? Where's everybody? Why, that's Nick. I thought we were supposed to meet him at the station. Well, that's Nick for you. Mother! Nick, we were going to meet you at the station. I couldn't wait. I took an earlier train. Mother, this is Hester Converse. How do you do? How nice to meet you, Mrs. Barkley. And the gentleman on uh, her right. I know, Jared. And Eugene. How do you do? Nick! And you must be Audra. Well, where's Heath? He'll be here soon. You're all just the way Nick described you. That trip from San Francisco seemed like a thousand miles. Now that I'm here, I can't really imagine what I was so nervous about. Uh, Hester and I were going to save this until you... Uh... Well, you had a chance to meet her and really know her, and she had a chance to know you. But I, I think we better tell him right now. We're going to be married. <laughs> well, well, what do you know? Congratulations, Nick. Thank you, Jerry. Oh, gosh, Audra, it's really uh, nice uh, to... Uh, age before beauty, my boy. Well, the mother, aren't you going to congratulate, congratulate me? Congratulations. Thank you. Very yes, of course, but now. And now, 
to a most charming, gracious, and completely captivating addition to our family. Sorry I'm late. But Nick, you weren't due in until... We were just toasting my prospective bride, Miss Hester Converse, my brother Heath. Well, what'd you do, knock her unconscious and drag her here? <laughs> Welcome to the Barclay family, Hester. Thank you, Heath. Oh, what you waiting on? Why don't you go ahead and kiss her? Might be your last chance, you know. I'll get you some champagne. I'm just off the range. Nonsense, it's Barkley dirt. And I love it. <laughs> but tell me, has Nick mastered this step yet? Not yet, but I intend to work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, thank Jared. you, thank you, thank you. Who's next? Uh, how about Heath? Yes, Heath. Come on, it's the rage of the East. Sorry, I'm not much for dancing, man. Please, Heath, just for me. Come on, let me talk you into it. Why don't you try Eugene? He's good at it. Mother, what do you think of her? She's lovely. But? But? I've only known her a week. Oh, less than that. You were only gone five days. Five wonderful days. Five of the most important days I've ever spent. I love her, Mother. From the first minute I met her. Where was that? Oh, in a cheap saloon down by the waterfront. She was wearing a red oh. dress. What there oh, was oh, up. Oh, you <laughs> No, I met her at Dave Wallace's party. Well, no, 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 that's not exactly true either. I saw her at the party. She was surrounded by men, three deep. I couldn't even get close enough to ask her for a dance. Anyway, Dave told me she had an appointment the following morning at his office. Well, I uh, made an arrangement to be there, too. Finally, Dave came out. He said something about being glad that we finally met. And I said, not half as glad as I am, Dave. Now, if you will properly introduce me to this young lady, I would like to ask her to be my wife. <laughs> At which point Dave laughed, and we all laughed. But Hester and I both knew that I wasn't joking. You do love her, don't you? She's made me happy. I can see that. Ready? Yeah. Eugene, I've seen bears that dance better. Oh, <laughs> wait till we get to San Francisco, Nick Barkley, and I start teaching you how to dance. Uh, You're going back to San Francisco? Oh, Hester's got about nine million things to do before the wedding, and, well, anything that's to be done around here, Heath can... Oh, I tripped to Indian Springs. I forgot about that. I'm sorry, Mother. Well, it's just that with Jared tied up at the trial, the, uh, the trip wouldn't be very much fun without you. Both of you, of course. Hester, hmm? how would you like to spend two weeks in the most beautiful mountains that God ever created? With a mountain stream where the trout run... Nick? That big. And the air, so fresh and so clean, you could bottle it and sell it. A huh? camping trip? Camping and fishing and dancing. Ah, let's not forget the dancing. We've had a logging camp up there, and those Friday night dances, Hester, you haven't lived until you've been to a Friday night dance. Of course, we don't do the same steps that you were demonstrating, but... Uh... Well, actually, I'd love it. It's just that right now I have so much shopping to do for the wedding. I'd plan on going to San Francisco, and then... Well, Nick, I just don't see how I can... All right, we'll go. Oh, no, no, now you've got things to do. Nick, today. I want to go.
Have you forgotten the party of the second part? Oh. In there? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Barclay's in conference. Uh, I'll tell him you're here. Here, you just give him this. Drop that on his desk and you won't have to say a thing. Go on, I'll take full responsibility. Finally got here. You didn't have any trouble finding the place. No, I didn't have any. Sure, trouble. it didn't inconvenience no, you. No, not a bit. Just passing through, no doubt. I'm here at your invitation, Jared. Brett, you wild and wandering maverick. <laughs> what do you got to say for yourself? Why didn't you let me know you were coming? What? Miss a welcome like this? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. Well, now that you're here, what are your plans? Just passing through, or do you plan to stay? Well, if I stay, can I make a place for myself? In this valley? Believe me, it's crying for men like you. It's your oyster. <laughs> Unum ad finum. <laughs> I've got some work to take care of. It won't take a minute. I'll meet you over at the hotel. We'll ride out to the house. You'll stay with us, of oh, course. Oh, I, I don't. Objections overruled. Good to have you here, Brett. Thank you, Counselor. Right. It's Skyler. Get word to him. And then it was right after that that I painted the zebra stripes on Professor Hamilton's old mare. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I huh? painted the stripes on the mare. You put the liniment in his bathwater. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How did you two ever graduate? Well, I just broke into an office and stole two diplomas. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Now, it wasn't all fun and games. Of course, it might have been for Brett here. He was kind of the brilliant type, just breezed through. I've often wondered why you never went into law. Well, I couldn't see myself clerking for a firm that might make me a junior partner in 20 years. So I traded the little my father left me for experience. Equal parts vision, luck, a sense of timing. You attract fortune like a magnet. Cautions for the plotters. I leaped over their heads. Cattle, shipping, land. And now, Brett? Now, a breather. And then I think, law? Ah, right here in this valley. If you can stand the competition, Jared. Competition? I'll send you the business. I'll even set you up an office space. Fair enough? That's more than generous. Brett, I think you'll find this whole valley is more than generous. Just give it a little bit of yourself and it'll never fail you. You'll see for yourself, Brett, in time. I hope so. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to go and unpack before dinner. <laughs> well, I'd say he hasn't changed a bit. The rising star has become a comet. Do comets ever stay put? Well, I don't know. He just might this time. Come in. I wasn't sure Silas had put any towels in your room. Wasteful user of towels. Comes from living in so many hotel rooms. Thank you very much. You're very thoughtful. I recognized you the moment you arrived. There's a photograph of you and Jared in Mother's bedroom. Oh, yes. Don't tell me. In cap and gown, grinning like a couple of chimps. Mm-hmm. I must have changed a lot since then. Well, I don't think you'd paint zebra stripes on anyone's mare again, or, or climb an enormous mountain so that you and Jared could have it named after yourself. Well, I hope you like staying here, as much as we love having you.
Jared Bartley? That's right. My name is Monroe. Oh, you, uh, you don't know me. I'd like to talk to you for a few minutes. Some place where we, uh, won't be disturbed. What about? Secret Service. Well, come in, Mr. Monroe. This way, please. It's a beautiful home, Mr. Barkley. Thank you. Mr. Barkley, you got a good friend visiting with you, name of Brett Schuyler. Now, don't confirm or deny, just let me do the talking. He was uh, moving around quite a piece before he came here. I know, because uh, I've been traveling that same route. And not that he knows that. I uh, wouldn't be much good at my job if he did. Interesting thing about Mr. Schuyler's travels, so every place he's been, New Orleans, Cheyenne, Santa Fe, San Antonio, they've had a flock of these. Well, what about it? Well, it looks so good, it'd take an expert to tell it wouldn't. You better start traveling a different route, Mr. Monroe. Mr. Barkley. You're trailing the wrong man. Mr. Barkley, I got my family back east. Little place in Virginia. It's been over a, a twelfth month since I've seen him. I don't like it. But when I believe I'm right about a man, I'll stay with him until I catch him. All right, Mr. Monroe, I've heard your suspicions. Now, suppose you give me your evidence. I don't have any. Mr. Monroe, Brett Schuyler and I went through law school together. We roomed together, ate together, boned from the same books together. I know him as well as I know myself. Well, now, it's been quite a while since you've seen him. Now, what is it he's been doing, did he tell you? He did. Land, cattle, shipping. Oh. I never heard that he signed a deed, or looked at a herd, or boarded a ship. But if you are confident he is not my man, then you won't mind helping me. And just what is it you'd like me to do? Well, now, Skyler knows he's safe here as your guest. You, uh should have easy access to his belongings. There's a good possibility he's got that money concealed in his bag. I'll show yeah, you. I know, I know. It's a Judas trick. Call it what you like. But I wouldn't ask this of a man's best friend if I didn't think it was necessary. I'm staying at the hotel in Stockton.
Mr. Barkley. Well, you're just in time for a bite of lunch. Come on in, come on in. Here, pull up a chair. I'll send down for another portion. No, thanks. Hi. Yeah? Winnie. Take a look at these. It's in a board of design. I usually come a cropper. Of course, uh, some are fancier than others. The genuine engraver, he don't mind how much time he puts in designing that lacy border there. Of course, the uh, counterfeit is uh, inclined to get a bit more impatient. Wants to get his hands on some real money. Especially when most folk can't tell the difference between the counterfeit and the real thing. And the fact that most banks print their own money. You found a flaw? No. Nothing counterfeit about these. These are all genuine. Give me a glass. Well, now, he's smarter than I thought. Well, maybe you're just a little too eager to find a suspect, Milro. Now, with all due respect to the Secret Service, I'd appreciate it if you'd take you and your suspicions right out of this valley. Mr. Barkley, I still feel I'm right about your friend. I'm going to stay with him till I get... a little bit early for the ladies. What do you say we step into my office over there and I'll buy you a drink? All right. Kind of like old times, isn't it, Brett? Mm-hmm. Remember that jug we used to keep hidden at school? Yeah. Well, the whiskey has gone over the table since then. It sure has. Yes, sir, we got a lot of years to catch up on you and me. So, let's hear from my well-traveled friend. Thank you. I want an autobiographical report. Oh, I wouldn't know where to begin. Well, how about the Seven Seas, those ships of yours? Where did they sail? East Indies? Among other places. Hmm. Modern Marco Polo, huh? Or maybe I should say Richard Dana, two years before the mast. You know, he didn't follow his law career either, or get rich on his ships. But you? Well, yes. I did pretty well. <laughs> You know, I can see you now with a spyglass up to your eye, watching your ships come in, bulging with riches from the Orient. What were their names? Oh, they were just chartered, Jared. The Lotus, the Condor. Clipper ships? Steam. Oh, sure, they're faster, more profit, huh? Then what, you just traded it all for land and cattle, huh? One or the other, I, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, come on, boy, jog your memory. The land first, I think. When, what year? What is this, Jared, a cross-examination? Well, I, I guess it kind of sounds like that, doesn't it? Say, I have some money I want to deposit in town. I'll introduce you at the bank in the morning. Fine. It's better than keeping it in the false bottom of my valise. You know, Brett, you decide to practice law here. You won't be starting from scratch, I promise you that. As a matter of fact, I'd be glad to have you come in with me. Oh, Jared. Now you think about it. I will. You are, Mr. Schuyler. Receipt for twenty thousand. Proud to have you as a valued customer of the bank. Roy. Mr. Schuyler is a new customer of ours. Roy, good friend of uh, Mr. Barclays. Yes, sir. Well, many thanks, Luther. Anything you do for Mr. Schuyler will be the same as if you're doing it for me. Always a pleasure. See you at home, see you. Right. Thank you, Jared. 
Roy will be finished with the count in a minute. I'll be transferring more of my money to Stockton and do most of my business through you, if you have the facilities. The valley's grown a lot since the Barclays settled here. And this bank's had to grow to keep up with it. Let me show you around. There's no branch of banking that we can't handle, Mr. Schuyler. Trust funds, loans, letters of credit, international currency exchange, expert valuations on produce, livestock, and a reserve in here for all contingencies. Mm -hmm. Money couldn't be safer if it was in the San Francisco Mint. People in the Valley like to know that. Big or small, they've learned to depend on this bank, never to lose a penny of their money. Say, this is high carbon steel. Well, now, there's not many who knows the difference between that and the old ferro-manganese variety. Well, I own a couple of shares in a foundry that make them. I'm not sure it'll stop a safe cracker completely, though. Well, maybe not all by itself. Anyone tries to break into that vault will get the shock of his life. An electric alarm system, huh? How did you know? I noticed your alarm bell out front. You're a very observant man. Thank you. Mr. Kirby, if I had any doubts about your bank's facilities up to now, I certainly don't have them anymore. You're beginning to sound like one of us already. And as a close friend of Jared's, I want you to come and see me personally anytime you have a banking problem. Yes, sir, I will. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, I'd like to make a small withdrawal on my deposit. Thank you. It's for uh, $200. How would you like it, sir? A couple of fifties, the rest in tens and twenties, please. There you are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schuyler. got the report. Success? Yes. Front door locks a Heaves Rodney Type 34A. I can handle that easy. What about the vault, Brett? Ordinary combination lock. Nothing for me, Brett? Ah, very pretty. Uh, but lucky for us. Not very original. Your banker is a thrifty man. Uh, he prints his bills from a stereotype. That's much cheaper than having a new design made up. He prefers to spend his money on the vault. An electric alarm system. Oh? It could be difficult. Well, between you and Ketchy, uh, there won't be any problem for you. Between Ketchy and you, you'll have to count me out. I'm sorry, I've done all I intend to do. This is the most ambitious plan we've ever had. And it's only workable if we carry it off as a team, of which you are an indispensable part. I didn't expect to feel this way. I can't do this to Jared Barkley, Clyde. Brad, my friend. We're not doing anything to him. We're doing it to the bank. We're doing it to him. This thing could wreck his whole life. How? The people that keep the money in that bank are his friends. They built this valley together. They trust him the way he trusts me. Sure he trusts you. That's why you're here. I can't do it, Clyde. 
Jaron's the closest friend I've ever had. I can't destroy him. Oh. You hear that catch? This fine young gentleman who unloaded an assortment of handsomely engraved mining stock on the cream of Philadelphia society has suddenly got himself all worked up over a, a friendship. He offered to take me into the law firm. To do what? To run his courthouse errands for him? To be a glorified clerk? Oh, that's all the use he'd have for an inexperienced law school student. Jared wouldn't treat me that way. That's how men like him get rich. Now, they didn't get theirs by giving anything away. No, it's the one who snarls and snaps the hardest is the one who gets to the top. And that's how the Barclays got where they are. And that's why that friend of yours offered you a job. So he could squeeze all the talent out of you with no cost to himself. Oh, uh, you can start inking that press, Ketchy. Won't take me too long to cut these plates. Now everything is going to go as schedule. Well, take the bank tonight. Oh, and uh, you better stay. You might learn something about the art of engraving. I'll be back. You're not still worried about your friend, are you, Brett? Now, we're the only real friends he's got, Ketchy. He knows that. Beautiful. Mm, thank you. I'm glad you like it. I wasn't sure. Well, if she didn't like it, I would. By the way, Brett, have you given any more thought to my offer? Yes, I have, Jared. I've given it a great deal of thought. I'm not quite sure I understand what it meant. Well, I, uh, I guess it means you'd be coming in as my assistant. Would certainly give you the experience you need. Searching out precedents, writing first drafts of some of your briefs, that sort of thing? <laughs> yes, I'm afraid that's what it would mean while you worked on the more important cases? At first, yes. That's fair enough, isn't it? Yes, it's more than fair, Jared. Pardon us for talking business at the table. And excuse me, I, uh, I have an appointment in town. Don't bother waiting up for me. Aha, uh -huh. well, in that case, you are excused. Good night. Good night, Brett. Well, you didn't exactly keel over with your offer, now did he, Jared? Maybe he didn't think it was good enough.
your coffee's cold, I'll get you some more. No, no, thanks. What is it, Jerry? All right. Well, it's... It's Brett. There was someone here to see me the day after he arrived. A Secret Service agent. He accused Brett of being involved in the counterfeit ring. Brett? Oh, no, I, I can't believe that. <laughs> I might as well believe it of myself. He didn't have any proof, but he... He asked me to help him. I did. I didn't find a thing. Not a single word, a deed, a scrap of paper that would make me doubt he was any different than he's always been. And yet I think I doubted him in spite of myself. I know. When somebody puts something like that into your mind, it, it's hard to root it out. It, uh, it just stays there. That's exactly how it's been. You know, when he first got here, I'd have done anything in the world to help him. And then after that man spoke to me, I got less and less sure of him and myself. And now? Do you trust him now? I don't know. I didn't at dinner. I think it showed. I think that's why he left so suddenly. Well, I'm sure you'll find the answer in the morning. Good night, darling. Seven left. Nine right. Repeat the last two numbers. Nine right, three left.
Seven right. Good morning. Good morning, Brett. If you want breakfast, you better grab a chair. Thank you. I've got something to say. Before you do, Brett, there's something I'd like to say. That offer of mine to take you into the office, it's withdrawn. Instead, I'm offering you a full partnership. Now, not that you're going to be any bargain for the first year, but knowing what you're capable of, I'd be wrong to offer you anything less. I want you in with me, Brett, on equal terms. The sooner the better. Brett, it's not like Jared has given something away. He spent an awful long time looking for just the right man. It's wonderful to fulfill something I know you both have always wanted. Well, now that that's settled, what was it you wanted to say? I hate to say this now. I'm leaving for Denver on the noon train. I'm sorry, it's... Just something I have to do. And I uh, have a business meeting at the hotel in town, so I'll have breakfast there. I'm all packed, so uh, I know it's very sudden. Will you be coming back, Brett? I don't know. You'll, uh, you need a buggy. If you do, my offer still stands. Goodbye, man. Goodbye, Brett. I'm sorry, Jared. So am I, Brett. But it's your decision to make. Found this on the table in Mrs. Scholar's room. I guess he forgot it. Thanks, Silas. Oh, to 
didn't take you long to say your goodbyes. I'll catch you a ride to Rio Vista. Take a riverboat from there, and I'll get the stage at Nanteca. And we'll all meet at Salt Lake day after tomorrow. So we might as well share this all right now. There's not going to be any sharing, Clyde. Well, what do you mean? I'm taking the money back. You're taking it back? I should never have gotten into this. It was a mistake right from the start. Oh, this is surely not the time to start. I'm worrying taking about the money now. back, and I mean it. about going back in that bank with that money? You're mad, Brett, putting stolen money back in the bank. Such a fool notion. I almost hope you get away with it. I said almost. Morning, Ira. Jared. Say, does a Mr. Schuyler have a reservation on the noon train? He did have, I believe. Yeah, here it is, but he changed it. He's booked on the midnight now. When did he change it? About an hour ago, I guess. Checked his bags and rode out someplace. Thanks, Ira. Now, Mr. Barkley. Well, Monroe, I thought you'd left town. Oh, nothing I'd like better. Only it don't fit in with my job. I hear your friend deposited quite a bit of money across the street the other day. That's right. All he had in his valise, I guess. I imagine the bank would let you examine it. Oh, I did. I did. And it's good money. And that's a puzzler. Now, the regular method would be for the counterfeiter to deposit some uh, bad paper and then start making withdrawals of the bank's good money. But I guess Mr. Schuyler's got a smarter scheme up his sleeve. Of course, now, there's uh, nothing much I can do about it till that uh, counterfeit starts circulating around town here. But uh, whatever he's up to, I got a feeling that bank's going to be part of it. Brett Schuyler have been in today. Not far as I know. Well, I thought he might have come in to make a withdrawal. Let me check. No, sir. He hasn't been here today. His account's just the way it was. No more deposits, no withdrawals. Except for a couple of hundred he withdrew the day that you brought him in. But I'm still expecting to do a lot of business with Mr. Schuyler, thanks to you. Told me he was transferring more of his funds here. Making his headquarters here in town. Yes, well, I, uh, I wouldn't count on that, Luther. He's leaving town today. He might not be back. Well, no. That's too bad. He, uh, he impressed me as a bright young man. Very intelligent about banking. He's the first man I've had in here who knew exactly what kind of steel that vault door's made of. Even knew about our electric alarm system. Anything wrong, Jerry? Hmm? Oh, uh... No, Luther, nothing.
Hold it right there, Brett. Forgot this. Funny. First time I've ever been without it. Hand over your gun. Jared, let me explain. There's nothing to explain. Hand over your gun. Get up your hands, both of you. Uh, get their guns, Ketchy, and the money. Uh, we got here just in time. This wouldn't be your friend Barclay, would it? And uh, tie them up, Ketchy. Get your hands behind your back. What's happening here, Jared? Who's that? The third member of the gang, Sheriff. I've heard some tall stories before in my time, but this one beats them all. I've been trying to figure out what made him think we could possibly swallow a lie as tall as that. It happens to be true. That money Mr. Barkley saw Skyler take out of the vault was counterfeit. Looks like, in a way, we uh, were both right about the man, huh? Sheriff, we'll talk about disposition in a moment. Fred, I'd... Uh... I'd like to have a word with Mr. Schuyler. Well, go ahead, Jared. We'll wait outside. You're gonna need a lawyer. Would you trust me to do the job? Why should you? As your friend. I was hoping you'd say that. to do that problem over the way I told you. After you do it, leave it on Miss Keller's desk and she'll correct it in the morning. Yes, ma'am. Afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Proverbs uh, 325. Oh! 
far as the buggy goes. Get up. After you, ma'am. Okay, amigo. Following us. As near as I can figure from the boy's description, your mother was picked up by Will Hanley, Julio Gallego, and Preacher Clegg. Sam Belden's boys. Belden? Audra, what are you doing here? I thought I told you to stay at home. She's my mother, too. I'm going. No, you're not. Someone has to stay at home when the ransom note comes. You know who took her? No. No, we don't. Jared, please, I want to go with you. Audra, believe me, I know how you feel, but this is no place for a woman. Kelly, you take Miss Barkley back to the ranch and see that she stays there. And as soon as you get the ransom note, you get word to us. Let's go. Cover your eyes, teacher. Easy does it now. I'm asking you again, what do you men want with me? He'll tell you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Where's Cleaver and Bates? Came back from Socorro yet. Sure take him a long time just to get supplies. You and Preacher watch the back trail. Julio, rustle up some grub. I'm Sam Belden. I know who you are. Care to go inside, ma'am? Ain't much, but there's some comfort. I'm asking you to go inside. It's all right. They ditched it. Well, which way do we go? Up over the ridge or down in the flats? We've known for more than a year that Belden's hideout is up there somewhere. But it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. 
Uh, not too much light to go by, either. We get over that next bridge. We ought to figure to make camp, huh? We get over that next bridge. We'll keep on moving just as long as we can see the trail. All right. Come on. Get up. make is the feast called the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. And now she'll be blessed. Luke 15. You should have mentioned a pretty girl gives a man an appetite. The lady's my guest. Make sure the others know it, including Cleaver and Bates, when they get back. I mean... Pity you, little man. Why don't you do whatever it is you want to do? Well, I don't exactly know what you mean. <laughs> you don't know well, what you think, senora, eh? <laughs> you better eat. Julio's not a bad cook. What are you asking? Ransom? <laughs> if I wanted that, I wouldn't get it from some small town school teacher, would I? No. No money, Miss Keller. Well, I'm not... You've gone to a lot of trouble. Why? I'll come to that. Maybe I ought to point out a few things, make your visit a little more comfortable. You call this a visit? Mind you're going to be with us a spell. You mean until they come for me? <laughs> Let them. Nobody's ever found Sam Belden yet, so I reckon they ain't going to find you either, will they? Tell me, how long have you been a school teacher? How long have you been a kidnapper? You'll do. You don't scare her easy. I like her. Got in from Socorro. Cleaver got drunk and landed in jail. Nobody knows him. They let him out in the morning. I don't think so. He shot a deputy. You judge bad on Cleaver, Sam. Let the new man go in for supplies. I say we leave him there. No. We ain't got nobody to spare. Our luck's been running bad, Sam. This ain't the time to push it. Maybe. But Cleaver's still one of my men, and that means we don't leave him. That's a core of jail. Ain't no different than the bank we busted in Carson City. We do it the same way. Now, we get some sleep tonight, and we start on it tomorrow. We do it like Carson City. We got no problems. How you get along with the little lady, Sam? Mm. So you don't scare easy, Miss Keller. You said it the first time, now I'll say it. I don't scare easy. You have one or two choices, lady. Either you do as you're told and you don't make trouble, or you fight me and I'll make you do as you're told. Now, you're going to stay in there tonight. I'll have somebody make up your bed and do us both a favor. Don't try to get away because there's a guard outside and they get trigger happy at night. Don't you think it's about time you told me why I'm here and when you'll let me go? <laughs> I never said anything about letting you go. And I'll let you stay alive as long as you earn it. How do I earn staying alive? You teach me to read and write. Some steak and eggs left. You want to finish it? Save it for lunch. 
If we don't have any luck today, we'll drop back to Sakara and pick up some more men. You're pretty sour first thing in the morning, aren't you? Sorry, Nick. I'm just looking at the chances as they are. Not up. Looks like a new world, don't it? Not for me. Maybe not. But if you're smart as I figure, you'll make the best of it. Let's get started. What's the matter? That's really why you brought me here, to teach you to read and write. That's the reason, teacher. All right, where are my books? It's all right, Miss Keller. I'm not much for the indoors. We're heading for Sakura now, Sam. When do you figure? How's Will doing? He's coming along pretty quick. I'll be leaving a little past noon. I'll meet you in that alley at the end of town. You got shot up in that Carson City bank holdup, didn't you? Things happen. I know. There was a man killed. Julio's brother. That's a chance we all take. Now, you gonna learn me to read her, ain't you? You know your alphabet? Well, I can make an X. That's it. Learning to read and write takes a long time. Hmm. Well, however long it takes. All right. Now, this is an A. A is for apple, and that's a picture of an apple to remind you. And it says here, the lad ate the apple. Apples are in apple pie. Say it. Say what? A is for apple. The lad ate the apple. Apples are in apple pie. A is for apple. The lad ate the apple. Apples is... R, R. Apples, apples are, are in, in apple pie. pie. Good. Good. Now pick out the A's. Here's one. Mm -hmm. This one. Mm -hmm. That's one. And no, uh, this one. Uh, and five. I got them all, didn't I? There are three more. Uh, how about that book? That's for the second grade, Sam. Oh. A is for. Apple. apple. The lad ate the apple. Apples are in apple pie. Good. <laughs> now, uh, oh, what's this letter? Oh, that's B. B is for boy, and this is C. C is for cat, and it says, the cat saw the, the boy. 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 Oh. <laughs> boy. The pictures will help you remember. And this, uh, this is D. D for deer. That ain't no deer. Well, that's what we call a pronghorn, little pronghorn calf, kind of like an antelope. A deer fawn is prettier. Prettiest thing in the world is a spotty fawn. Well, I bet the fellow who wrote that book never got out of the classroom. Why didn't you go to school, Sam? We'll talk about that some other time. All right. Now we'll start over. Well, 
one guess as good as another. Up across there to the back country, down below to the flats. Maybe you ought to split up. What I'd like to know is why we haven't heard from Kelly. He wouldn't have had any trouble finding us so far. It don't make sense, Sam Belden not asking for ransom. I say we'd better split up. Maybe you're right, Nick. Hank, Pete, you go with the Barclays. The rest of you come with me. We'll meet in Socorro after sundown. You know, I wish Belden had asked for a ransom. Then at least we'd know she's safe. Come on and help me. No. Figure this out for yourself. The cat saw 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 the cat now, that was childish and stupid. I don't see why you have to devil a man, so. The learning process is very painful. Now, let's get started again. You want to check this? Double check base on a hay wagon. See, you don't use too much kerosene. All right, Sam. I'm short on the fuse. It'll still give you enough time. All right, get going. I don't understand. What well, says right here, ma'am? The cat saw. The rat. that have been brushed out. Well, if you're right, that'd put them in the hills somewhere above Socorro. That narrows it down to about a thousand square miles. Let's go over this once more. Well, not now. I'm having my lunch. We'll go over it when I'm finished. <laughs> been a long time since I took orders from a lady. She was as pretty as one of them fawns we talked about, my wife. San Francisco. Now, that's where I met her. It was about nine years ago. She was younger than me. She was soft and fresh, like a new sunrise. But uh, she's dead now, it don't matter. I'm sorry. Don't be. She was happy. The times we had, why, she told me, She told me that anyhow. It left me with something to remember. Sam, why is it so important for you to learn how to read and write now, in this way? <laughs> you expect me to be sitting in some classroom somewhere? <laughs> That'd be the sight. Sam Belden learning his letters with a posse and six marshals waiting outside the door with a rope. <laughs> Where's your home, Sam? Oh, I got a place in the high country. It's a quiet place. Is that really home for you? My wife's buried there. That makes it home. Last year, when I was about to leave, she got took with the fever and died. I uh, put some rocks over her place in the earth, and I left. Haven't been back since. 
I keep thinking about going back. Warm days. The air is so clear you can see for a hundred miles. There's a little spring that runs by the side of the hill behind the house. Indians say if you drink the water, the time will come when you sing your death song within the sound of that spring. Sam, you still haven't told me why you want to learn to read and write. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, the signs. That's why. You see, we do a lot of traveling in strange countries and not knowing what the signs say, uh, sometimes we get into a lot of trouble. Uh, that's why I gotta learn how to read. I see. Is there something wrong with that? Every man's got a reason I told you mine. Did you? What do you want? It's time, eh? Yeah. S is for school, right? O is for out. School's out, teacher. Set only. Only what? I don't like it, Sam. The way our luck's been running, I got a feeling. You always got a feeling. Now get ready. We'll wait for your signal behind the store. Now you got five minutes. Tether your horse behind the livery stable. Let's get going.
me see it. Will you stay in the saddle? I, I think so. No sign of anybody since we lost them back at that turnout. Huh, let's go. Briggs is just the other side of Green Meadows. Now go get him. Green Meadows? It's kind of risky around here right now, Sam. Get the doctor. <laughs> How are you doing, compadre? It's just a bullet somewhere. You bury me by the spring? Shut up, Olio. We've been together a long time. A long time. Get over here. Yeah, what do you want? Sam, we want to talk. Well, uh, we sent for the doc. Julio's going to be all right. Yeah, well, that's fine. Sam, I reckon we hope he'll be fine. But... But what? Well, the men figure I should do the talking. Well, about what? Come on, spit it out. Well, it's no good anymore. Last time it was Carson City, today's no better. So we figure there's no sense in hanging around. So you're all gonna run out. Just cause our luck went a little bad. Things ain't going just right. Yeah, well, something like that. The way we look at it, things aren't getting any better, they're getting worse. You speaking for all the other men? Yeah. Get out. Who needs you? Get out! Who needs any of you? The twilight of Sam Belden. What's that? I don't need their stripe. They run scared when things go a little sour. Better off without them. Who are you trying to convince, me or yourself? The preacher's dead. I was getting tired of his lectures. So don't you start. You're here for one thing, so don't you forget it. I'm going to forget it, Sam. You're what? I'm going out that door. Now, you have a gun. If you intend to use it, use it now. Here. Now, until that doc comes, we're going to continue with the lessons. Sit down.
my wife. Well, I, I made it to take the face of the rocks I put there. The words that go on it, I, I want to be able to put them on myself. And I want to be able to read this when I'm through. You had a fight. We trailed them as far as the Green Meadow turnoff and then lost them. It was near dark, so we figured to try again at sunup. Will you take us to the turnoff? Now? Yeah. Now. Sure. Shut up. Wolves, they got to sound off all night long. Foxes now, like this one, they're quiet. The man chased the fox. Get over there on the window. I'm Miss Keller, the school teacher at the mission in Stockton. I'm Dr. Briggs. What's wrong with him? He's got a bullet in him. Fix him up, Doc. I'll need more light. Right, right down over my bag, Miss Keller. Keller. Over my bag, Miss Keller. <coughs> Lost a lot of blood. This man will need considerable care if you expect to keep him alive. You fix him up for now, Doc. We'll take care of the rest later. that bottle, Miss Keller. <coughs> Bandages. The bullet's too deep. I can't take it out here. If you get him into town, he might live. Oh, uh, thanks for everything, Doc. Well, you walk the doc to his horse. Let's go, Doc. 
What are you waiting for, Doc? I'll write you where to send the bill. <laughs> go ahead and shoot. If you don't let the doctor go, I will shoot. All I will. All right, I'll let him go. You swear to it? I swear. I hand over the gun. I give you my word. Keep his horse here and take off his shoes. The walk will do you a lot of good into town, Doc. But it's 15 miles. Oh, then you ought to make it by noon tomorrow. Well, I told you I wouldn't kill him. I didn't say I wasn't going to slow him up. What now, Sam? Tomorrow morning we're leaving, before the posse comes. But we haven't finished our lessons yet, teacher. Sam Belden's got your mother. Is she all right? Have they hurt her? No, she's not hurt, I'm sure. Where are they? Back there, high country, about, Doc, about four and a half. Doc, Doc, do you think you can lead us to them? Yeah, I think so. Can you ride? Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's go. We're going to have to make a litter for him. He ain't going to make it, Sam, on a horse or a litter. I don't think I'll make it this time. What? What are you talking about, Julio? Sure you are, you're going to be all right. Oh, Sam, you heard him. Now, I said leave him here, he's only going to hold I don't him. leave him. What for what? Oh, Sam, Sam, can't you see he's in pain? Sam, they come, find him like he is, they got to take care of him. They'll leave somebody behind to do that. It'll help even up the odds for us. He's bleeding badly again. Get him inside. You get him inside. I'm leaving. Well, you heard me, I said inside. Work out for me, Julio. Maybe someday I'll come back and get you. Take you up to that place at the spring. Maybe you and me will we'll be there together. I'm leaving now, Sam. Don't try and stop me. Give up, Sam. Give up and ride out now. Ever see a hanging, Miss Keller? That's what's waiting for me if they ever get their hands on me. Ain't no man alive that can do that to Sam Belton. No. We're going up to that place. Just you and me. Change your mind, Will? No. They changed it. Well, 
better check the other side. Get over there, down on the floor. Keller is ill, I fill in for her. Bowden! This is Nick Barkley. Send my mother out of there! Nick Barkley. And you must be Victoria Barkley. Queen bee of the whole valley. You've been laughing at me all the time. Me, I thought I got me a school teacher. Instead, I got Victoria Barkley. Oh, how you must have been laughing. No, Sam. I wasn't laughing. Then what? You figured I was stupid. Can't read, can't write, can't do nothing. Is that what you thought? He's stupid? No, Sam. Not stupid either. I guess I just figured you were another pupil who... who wanted to learn. Melvin! You're completely surrounded. You've got no chance. Let her go. i got no more use for her. Be out of your mind, Sam. We can't do that. They won't shoot while she's in here. I said let her go. Come on, lady. Bye, teacher. It's too bad it couldn't have been another time and another place. You go ahead and kill yourself if you want to, Sam. Let her go, Will! Just take it nice and easy, lady, if you want to stay alive. Now open the door. Will! Take one more step, Sam, and I'll kill her! Open the door, lady. Nice and easy now. Come on. Don't anybody shoot. Anybody that moves, I'll kill her. All right, lady, now let's just get moved. Where? Let her go and get back here. No, Sam. Away from your gun and crawl up here. Stay down.
A cat saw the rat. The dog saw the cat. I bet they sure did have a good fight. The eggs have gone up, so we're going to raise chickens. <laughs> Hadn't thought of it, Brother Nick, but now that you mention it, it's a pretty good idea. Plain to see neither you ever tried raising chickens. The fruits of my labor, my boy, from a grateful client temporarily short of funds. Well, so, now, what could be in these jugs? A little corn? Aged red wine, if you don't mind. Oh. <laughs> Much obliged. Behold. That's a pig. Yeah, that's what it is. And these are chickens. The spoils of the Desenzo case. You won it for him. And against impossible odds. Believe me, I'd rather have these little trophies than a thousand dollar fee. Oh, fees. I'm so glad for you. Oh, this is a telegraph. Oh, please. thanks. Would you mind telling me what I'm to do with these? I learned to love them, Brother Nick. Mm. Jared, I'm so happy you won your case. What is it, Jared? From Don Gordon in Sacramento. Do you remember Keno Nash? You prosecuted him. Convicted him of murder. But he didn't do it. Mistakes happen. They're ugly, but they do happen. This little mistake cost him nine years of his life. I was so positive he was guilty. But I can still hear him screaming at the judge, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And threatening to kill you if he ever got out. Find a bit of friendly advice, Mr. Barkley? It'll be bitter for everybody if you don't see the prisoner. Just leave a few dollars for him, whatever will ease your conscience and let it go at that. And just forget that an innocent man was convicted of murder. Is that it, Warden? Keno Nash was an habitual criminal, a member of the Hounds. And there's nothing innocent about them. And he's been nothing but trouble the nine years he's been here. That doesn't change the fact that he wasn't guilty of murder. Come in. Well, Nash, today's the day. All right. Do you think I'd forget you? I was only doing my job. I've come to offer you any help you may need. I'll be leaving on the one o'clock train for Stockton. If you happen to decide you need a friend. What makes you so sure that this friend of yours in Stockton is going to be willing to help you get a fresh start? Barney owes me a favor, too. When they bring the bucket around. The what? Drink of water. There's a water cooler down on the end of the car. Why don't you go help yourself?
What are you laughing at, you fancy dude? All right, now. All right, don't flood the whole car. <laughs> I'm a free man! Kino! Kino! Let him alone! drink or something and maybe get yourself a new suit of clothes. This will help out. Oh! oh, get out of there! You've ruined my picture! Meg? Meg! It's Kino! Don't you remember me? No. What are you doing here? How did you get out? Well, they just found out I didn't kill that fellow and they showed me the front door. Why did you come here? I come to see Barney. Where's he hiding? He's in the churchyard. How about Charlie? Charlie Trumbull, do you ever see him? Gone. Joe Pritchard? In prison. And so's Hawkins. O'Sullivan was hanged down in Mexico. None of them left? None of the men from the river? None of the hounds, you mean? What did you expect? A hundred of the worst thieves and bullies that ever hit San Francisco. Oh, I remember. Take what you want and laugh at them that lost it to you. Burning boats on the river. Unless you was paid to leave them be. Break a man's head for half a cent and... and a woman's heart for nothing at all. Taken and hurting and... never thinking the day'd come when you wouldn't be the biggest and the strongest. Well, that's what happened to Barney. He got old, and he picked a fight and got his ribs stove in. What did you expect? There's nothing left. Kino, let's go. smiles, mischief in her eyes. Yeah. Well, nine years changed things a lot, Kino. I guess people most of all. Not you. I remember you from the trial. You ain't changed a bit. Not a whisker. Kino, I'm not gonna make any excuses for that trial. I believed you were guilty. You were wrong. You hungry? My belly is growling. Look, you see that restaurant right over there, Canton Palace? Why don't you go on over there and get yourself some supper? I'll join you right after I check in at my office. We'll sit down and talk and see what you're gonna do.
Dollar says he's fresh out of prison. Yeah, San Quentin. You see that gray jacket he's got on? That's what they give you when you leave San Quentin. Hey, what do you say, Yankee? Yeah, it ain't none of your business anyway. Come on, let's drink up. Get that load of barbed wire back to the ranch before Nick comes looking for us. Rum. No rum. Whiskey or brandy. What do you like, please? Give me the best you got. You wouldn't try to pass off a bottle of coffin varnish on me, would you? Very good. Kick like a mule. Mm. see it spoiled by any trouble. You don't cause them, eh? You won't have any. Fair enough. I've always had a drink it alone. Let me buy you a drink. No, thanks. I, you're my... Bring your friends along. <laughs> Bring another glass. Those friends... The ones I was drinking to. Half alligator, half horse. Both of them, they had a hollow leg. Many a times when we would sit Thank around... Thank you for the drink, and thanks for having us over here. We don't like to drink alone, either. It's all right. You come off the Mississippi, do you? Yeah, I used to be. How'd you know? Well, you were saying half horse, half alligator. Well, that's what it took to work on the river. You fellas ever work on the river boats? Mm -hmm. Well, I used to know a lot of them that did when I was growing up around San Francisco. Well, a lot of rivermen come west looking for gold. I never found a one that found any. That's right. Then most of them had turned into being hounds. That's right. It was better than going hungry. You know, my mama used to run a boarding house in San Francisco. She had six hounds live at that house. Well, I tell you, we hounds, we live very high. It must have been a nice place. It was a nice place. Till they burned it down. And they killed my mama for the rent money. You know, my mama's life was worth just about $28. Well, maybe you better tell us where you got this money, hound. You just take it easy, boy. I think you just tell us. Whose throat did you cut? Back off, Jack. If there's any accusations, the sheriff will make them. Well, that's just where we're going, boy. Come on, we can to see the sheriff. Wait, no, wait. Free to go. We sure want to thank you for Don't swearing. Don't thank me. 
The fines and damages to that restaurant will come out of your pay. It wasn't our fault, Mr. Barkley. When we saw that Frisco hound flashing all that money around, we figured... That... You figured wrong. Now, the way I hear it, you acted like a bunch of self-appointed vigilantes. I'm ashamed to say you worked for me. Now, get back to the ranch. What are you gonna do, send me back to San Quentin? He paid your fine so you wouldn't have to spend the night in jail. Come on, Kino. We'll find a hotel room for the night. Jared, do you realize what you're doing? Taking responsibility for that one? Sheriff? He's trouble, nothing but. to lock us up at sundown, Quentin. First time in nine years I've seen him. You got one of those? One what? Star. I've got one. Can't see it. Never have and never will. My ma used to say, Kino, you was born under a dark star. You was born into this world owing two dollars with your neck already sized up for the hangman's rope. Your pa with his hand in somebody else's cash box and your ma a common woman. She used to say, Kino, you got a life for looking through prison bars ahead of you unless the Lord's gentle enough to let him hang you when you're still young. That's what she used to say. And she was right. She sure had the power. Call quitting time. Come on, Kino. Terp, you get on that prow board. I'll let you give him a hand. Well, welcome home, Jerry. Glad to be back. This is Kino Nash, my brother Heath. He's signing on. Well, we got plenty of work for you. It's all right over there. Had that run in with Yankee and the boys? Yeah. It wasn't his fault. As I understand it, the odds are three to one. Let's hope he can handle those stumps as well. This is Keno Nash. You can pass out your names later. Now, what do you say we get this stump pulled up? Ain't this job enough without you asking us to work with a Frisco hound? I ain't asking you, I'm telling you. With all respect, Mr. Barkley, there's plenty of good men for hire without hiring a nobody that's bound to cause trouble. Everybody in this valley got reason to hate the hounds. Ain't never been a one of them any better than a wild animal. Since when is the hiring on this ranch put up to a vote? It ain't that, Mr. Barkley, it's just that... It's just that we ain't about to go to work with no Frisco hound, that's all. Jared, you got any cash on you? Some. Any man who wants to pick up his time, see my brother. All right, pick up your pay or get back to work. It's not much of a welcome, Kino. Better than a poke in the eye with a stick. 
I've never been poked in the eye with a stick. Give him a hand with that stump. morning and I'll I'll try and find him something around the ranch. All right. Sure you won't stay and pull a few stumps with us. <laughs> See you at the house. Let's go. Yankee, come out here, will you? I want you to look over these traps, fix any that need it, huh? Still plaguing the cattle up in the foothills. That's right, and that's why I want you to get on it as soon as possible. And which first, the traps, that busted trasher, shoes for your mother's saddle horse, or that windmill that's uh -oh. broke down over yeah, by the Yankee, if I didn't know you better, I'd say you were complaining. The ranch is growing, boss. There's just more blacksmithing than my two hands can do. Yankee, I'd say you need some help. Oh, Jared, he... And I think I've got just the man for him. Kino, let's get you settled in the bunkhouse, and I'll show you around. Kino. How'd it go? Wasn't much different than the rock pile. Why, he did more work than any two men put together. Kino, this is Yankee, our blacksmith. What would you say to going to work for him as his helper? Mr. Jared. Yankee would be more than willing to teach you the trade. Guess we got off on the wrong foot yesterday. What do you say we forget and start fresh? I have no quarrel with you. Come on into the smithy. I'll take a look before you decide. So that's what nine years in prison does to a man, huh? I was in the courtroom the day the jury convicted him. Have you forgotten how wild he became when he heard that verdict? How he screamed? Screamed he'd kill you if he ever got the chance. Well... Well, what? Kind of foolish, isn't it? Bringing him here? It's like putting your head in a lion's mouth. Oh, he hasn't tried anything. That doesn't mean he won't. Nick, I helped rob this man of nine years of his life. I figure I owe him. I need you and the family to help me repay him. Can't very well say no, now can we? Well, I just hope it's never the choice of easing your conscience or saving your life. thing you learn in this smithy is you do like I tell you. When I tell you. Now, step on the other bar and try to pull open its mouth. known how. Me 
make you think he was back in prison, didn't it, Hound? Huh? Kind of jumped there. Sounded kind of like the jailer clacking his stick alongside the bars, didn't it? Huh? No trouble. Oh, I don't want any trouble either, huh? No trouble at all. But are you sure you don't want any trouble? Huh? Have I got a choice? Ooh. You got a real choice, Hound. You can stick around here where you ain't wanted. Or you can get out. Go on down the road. You ain't gonna run me out with no axe handle, boy. I wasn't thinking of doing that. I wouldn't try and run off nobody with an axe handle, least of all somebody's been hired on personal by Mr. Jared. But I got to thinking, Hound. You know that uh, jail could work against a man, you know? What I mean is that uh, if things was to start happening around here, that a person that's been to jail might get blamed for. Well, that poor old soul could be right back behind the bars of San Quentin again, couldn't he? Huh? Ain't that right, Alan? Look at there, Hound. Kind of give you the willies, don't it? Huh? Sure is good to see you again. Thank you. Came to see if you finished that collar for him. <laughs> Kino's working on it now. Good morning, Kino. Do you like working here? You know, when I was a little girl, this was my favorite place. I'd pretend I was a princess and the, the wicked king had locked me up in a deep, dark dungeon. Who was the wicked king locked in the prison? Oh, yeah? Jerry? Oh, heavens no. Why would you think that? You mustn't blame him for the mistake, Kino. It wasn't any more his fault than, than the judge of the 12 men on the jury. What's the matter? What's done is done. What's going on around here? See how that's been filed down? So it'll break apart as soon as you try to set it. The same thing with three other traps. say you deny you've done this Kino what possible reason could you have had you had no cause no cause at all ain't up been fair with you ain't up been teaching you blacksmithing then why maybe you just wanted to see what you could get away with is that it you pull a trick like this up at the prison you'd be hauling iron for six months you know what these traps cost Eleven dollars. You ain't never carried iron on your leg before, you... Kino. Put your foot up here. Do like I tell you. Put your foot up here. He had no right to shame me like that. He had no right. Kino, you mustn't. I'm not sorry about them traps. They're mean, cruel things. But necessary. The bears have been killing our cattle. Well, then shoot them. Don't let them bleed their lives out in a trap. Would you put that puppy of yours into a trap? I wouldn't. Would you hold him for me, please? He's a 
scrawny little fellow, isn't he? You got a name? No, not, not yet. No. I had a dog once. Named him Bosco. A fine friend. He's better than most of them walk on two legs. I'll have his collar for you soon. You know, Kino, I, I really haven't got the proper time to take care of him. What I'm trying to say is, I want you to have him. Looky there where Kino hides out. Ah, Kino. Hey, you better watch out for that puppy there. What if one of them bales of hay should kind of fall off and crush him in his head? Huh? And on the other hand, he might get hold of some rat poison. Or maybe he'll walk over and fall on a horse trough and drown himself. You touch a hair of this dog's head and I'll kill you. Oh? You sure you'd want to, Hound? I ain't a woman. I had nothing to do with your ma being killed. Sometimes a man's better off forgetting the harm that's done him. You tell me how, huh? Yeah? How does a man forget seeing his mama lay face down in her own blood? That's for you to do, boy. That's just what I'm gonna do, Kino. started this? Him! Well, he's had a grudge against us ever since that fight in town. He jumped us without warning. I warned you, Mr. Barkley. What about it, Kino? Is that true? What do you think? When I ask you a straight question, I want a straight answer. Go ahead. Call us liars. Kino? I'm not finished with you. Nick, let him go. All right, Jared. What are we going to do about him? Fire him. Is that what you'd have me do? I don't think you should have brought him here in the first place. That's plain and simple. Oh, no. Come on, Nick. Jared. Jared, do you still believe you did the right thing, bringing him here? What else could I do? I owe him. Something, a start, something. Because you prosecuted him to the best of your ability? I took nine years of his life. Well, you were judge, jury, and all, huh, Jerry? Heath, if I didn't put out a hand to him, who would? The people in Stockton? Why? He was a hound, and all the hounds ever did was terrorize the storekeepers and pirate goods on the river. 
Or maybe I should have sent him to San Francisco. That would have been worse for him and them. He would have been completely alone. You're all talking about him like he's some kind of animal. A, a stray to be picked up or let wander. He's a gentle man. Why is he gentle? Because he likes dogs? Well, the decision to bring him here is behind us. What now, Jared? Give him time. To do what? Fix bear traps? To put nine years of prison behind him. Oh. I did like to drink by myself, remember? Look, Kino, I came to bury the hatchet. And also to inform you about something which I just overheard that really concerns you. I got to thinking there this afternoon about what you said. About a man being better off if he could forget the things that had been done wrong to him in the past. And that made a great deal of sense to me. What you hear that concerned me? Well, first, let me tell you. You know, you should know better than anybody about forgiving grudges and things that have been done wrong to you in past years. Because here you are working for Mr. Jared Barclay, and he's the very one that sent you up behind the walls at San Quentin and for something that you didn't even do. Yet here you are right back working for him again. And also because you didn't have nothing to do with what happened to my mama. I'd have hung those men myself, killing a woman. Please, let's drink to that and let's... Just forget what's done happened between us, okay? You know, don't, don't be so suspicious. You know, you're suspicious of the wrong people. Come on. You're gonna need it, really, when you hear what I got to tell you. Just what did you hear? Please take a drink. What did you hear? You know, look, I don't think that I should tell you if you don't take a drink. I think it's only fair that way. That makes me feel more secure. Mr. Barclay's going to send you back to jail. He... He can't. Well, you think he can't? But he can, and he will. Now, Kino, every one of us done heard how you threatened to kill Mr. Barclay in the courtroom. Now, Jared Barclay ain't one to leave loose ends untied. I haven't done anything! Of course you ain't done anything, but that didn't make any difference the last time, and that's what you said, too, and you was innocent. Now, Kino, you know where he's at right now? He's right up there in that big house, eating dinner with all them fancy people. And you know what he's doing, Kino? He's laughing at you. He's laughing at you. You know what I'd do if I was you? I'd go up there to that house and I'd cram that laugh right down his throat. Just a minute, he said he was my friend. I know he said he was your friend, Kino. But you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna be the same thing all over again. The jury's gonna say guilty, you're gonna go back to prison, you're gonna go in the punishment box, you're gonna go in the sweat hole, and then they're gonna beat on you every day, they're gonna whip you. And you know what you're gonna be saying all that time? You're gonna be saying, I had me a chance to get even with Jared Barkley, and I didn't do it. Now you think about that boy.
Lock them in the spring house. Down, Jared, we have a decision to make. Oh? Looks like the jury's already reached a verdict. Pass the coffee, will you, Nick? He tried to kill you, you know. He was drunk. You offering that for an excuse, huh? An extenuating circumstance. We know how you feel, Jared, but it just doesn't make sense to let him stay on. We thought of getting him a job on another ranch, but that would only pass the problem on to someone else. All right. What would you have me do? Swear out a complaint? Charge him with attempted murder? Send him back to San Quentin? Could be murder the next time. I thought we agreed to leave Kino to me. Last night changed that, Jared. Is it unanimous? Well, I vote no. There's got to be some way to reach him, and I intend to find him. Kino didn't seem to be holding a grudge against Jared. I wonder what could have happened. Fire bill. Wrong with you. There ain't no fire. What's going on? The Frisco hound down broke out of spring house. What are you talking about? I seen Keno not half hour ago. Where was he? Coming out of the barn with that pup tucked under his arm. Went on towards the old foothill road. Y'all ain't just gonna stand here and let Mr. Barkley go out and catch that hound by himself, are you? What's this thing all about? What's Keno done? He got drunk last night in the uh -huh. spring house. How did he get drunk? Don't look at me like that. You know it, I wouldn't give him no whiskey. Maybe you did. That looks like the bottle of sour mash you bought in town last weekend. Well, that's what I've been trying to tell you. He found it, and he stole it, and then he got drunk on it. Sure, everybody knows that Frisco hounds are thieves and liars, right? Ain't that what I've been telling you all, all along? And don't last night prove it that he got the bottle after he stole it, he got drunk on it. And then he went in and he tried to kill a lawyer. You put him up to the killing. I never thought you'd go that far. That's a lie, what he's saying. It's that ain't true. True, all right, Jack. You're a miserable excuse for a man. I hope he finds him and I hope they kill each other. Barkley. There's nothing to run from, and there's nothing to be afraid of. 
You stinking liar. All I want to do is talk to you. Liar? Kino, wait. I'm not going back to prison. Kino, nobody wants to send you to prison. Kino! Kino! Ah! Ah! Kino! Kino, help me! Kino! Help me! Kino! Kino! That's just the way I seen it. They threw me in the punishment hole. I seen you with an iron on your leg, just as it was on mine. And you begging for God's mercy and getting nothing back but the devil's laugh. Then go ahead and watch. You paid enough for the privilege. I, I believed you when you said you were my friend. I believed it. I was it willing to forgive. I've been an animal for so many years. You made me want to be a man again. Forget the past. Help me, Kino. Help me. suppose you'd want to be seen having a drink with me in town. I mean, considering the company I used to keep. Afternoon, Keto. Honest wages. Mr. Nick said I earned every penny of it. Well, Nick always says what he means. Mr. Heath said he could teach me to write my name so I can sign the receipt book proper. Bosco's certainly growing. He won't be a puppy much longer. Keno! You coming or not? Say, Keno. Why don't you get the pup's picture taken? If you happen to be going anywhere near the photographer's shop in Stockton. I just might. Ma'am? Miss? Was that suggestion as innocent as it sounded? Nope. The photographer's name is Meg, and she talks with a smile with mischief in her eyes. By Jared <laughs> Thomas Barkley, Esquire. Well, when you rejoin the human race, you rejoin the human race. <laughs> Thank you.